All right. All right. Mozilla HQ, we're still getting a lot of background noise. All right, Matt, let us start this party, mate. I'd like to welcome everybody to the weekly Mozilla Webmaker Community Call. Really excited to have everybody on to the last community call of 2012. And I think, pending anything that might go down on the 21st, it's good to know that the end of the world didn't happen this month. So with that, let me uh, turn your attention in the Etherpad. It is etherpad.mozilla.org slash December 18th, capital D-E-C-1-8, D-E-C-1-8, capital D. Please join us in the Etherpad. Do we have any first timers and new team members on the call? Line 7071. Anybody here that has not been on a webmaker call before, please hit star seven to unmute and say hello. We'd love to hear your voice and get it into the mix. Excellent. Sammy Silent, thank you so much. It's good to have you in the circle now. Welcome. Okay. Um, hey, now that's beautiful. We've got somebody typing in the new introduction saying that their 11-year-old just made her holiday music piano debut by accident. Um, that's just too touching for the holidays. All right, beautiful people. Let us move onward even as the etherpad continues to fill up with participatory goodness. Um, line 93, I uh, just wanted to draw your attention to the video of last week's call. Line 98, aggregated blog and press coverage. And line 100, a place where you can make this etherpad better. If anything is missing from the above, please add your links to relevant updates there at what is now line 101. Friends, today we've got a lot of content. It is the Webmaker 2013 Planning Palooza, and we've got three big tofu -y, meaty planning items. That means we're not going to have time for everything else that is on the pad, and we apologize for pushing it into the next anim. But uh, in the meantime, please do flesh out your items as nonverbal updates as best you can. That said, ladies and gentle persons, mozillions of all stripes and flavors, I give you Mark Sermon, a recent survivor of a Mozilla board meeting and a man who is here to tell us what went down there and what we can expect from Mozilla and Webmaker in 2013. Mark Sermon. Yay. Uh, thank you, Alan Gunn. I feel like I'm on uh, some kind of variety show, which I guess in, the, in 2012 is a, a banned concept. The Internet has replaced all variety shows with cats. Um, anyway, uh, as... Anybody who is a regular participant on this call knows uh, we just had our, this, our final board meeting of the year. And at that, we presented our plan for next year, which we've gone through in various ways on this call before. Uh, and I just wanted to share some of the slides from that uh, briefly here uh, and to see if there are kind of questions or feedback. And mostly, I just wanted to share some of kind of what the board reactions were to stuff that we, we talked about. Uh, over the last, last couple of months. And the short answer is, uh, you know, top, top level of it is incredibly supportive and excited about what we've done in the past year. And so we, we did a kind of year in review piece, a huge amount of validation and keep moving energy from the board, uh, as well as um, kind of support for the plan we have next year in terms of doubling down with a real emphasis on the learning side of making and learning, which um, was something that kind of there was a lot of discussion, discussion around. So I'll, I'll highlight that as we go through. Um, so just to, to kind of quickly say the stuff we shared with them and that they felt really positive about was that you know, 2012 was the year we put ourselves on the map. Um, we, people know what Webmaker is inside Mozilla, outside Mozilla, uh, and we shipped stuff and we built uh, initial community. And huge support from them on that. Um, recognition from them that what we built is a good base with the tools and that what we shipped was a huge achievement uh, in 2012. And also, I think, you know, the, the stuff that we shipped was what we set out to do, although we changed some of it through the year, so I think they felt we, we did the thing we promised to do. They felt what we did was great work. I think they didn't expect that we didn't expect that we would come out of this year with a strong community of, of mentors as a big piece of what we were doing. And so, again, like further encouragement from them to, to grow that uh, and a feeling that that was something that was, was a big achievement by all of us. The other thing that we talked about that I think we don't discuss here very often is 
really an encouragement from them to keep doing what we did in 2012 around building partnerships and kind of getting us out there as a thought leader in this whole making and learning space. And it's something that really you don't see as much if you're not dealing with those kind of partnerships or unless you're kind of monitoring where we show up in the media. Um, but that was something that we achieved in 2012 as we kind of started to, to bang the drum and make news uh, around, uh, around WebMaker and the broader kind of making movement. And then not often celebrated enough, one of the other big achievements in, uh, in 2013, aside that Jeffrey leaves right at the moment, um, was we continued, to, uh, we continued to grow the philanthropic and donation support that we got. And so you can see on that graph, uh, you know, the red line was this year, uh, and, uh, and we raised much more money than we have uh, any time in the past uh, as Mozilla. Jeffrey, you just walked into the room as we give you a round of applause. For raising that money. A round of applause for raising, raising a lot of money. <laughs> and the, the important thing we talked about at the board, mem the board meeting on this is this is really a proxy for people understanding and supporting what we're doing. That not being in the market with a commercial product uh, means that you're, you're looking for other measures of people's support for what we're doing. And going into next year, especially the individual donation stuff, is something that we want to continue to push as a way to see, do people get it? Do they feel like the cause that we picked up of web literacy, of making and learning, is one we're supporting? So that was the, the 2012 stuff. Uh, and as I, as I said, really, I, I can't convey enough. And you know, these are kind of smart and also kind of cynical people, um, that the degree to which they feel we're doing the right stuff. Um, and so actually, everybody gets a huge round of applause for that. The people who, who are on the other end of the phone know that we just have a clapping machine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so 2013, I, I don't think much of this is going to be that surprising. Um, I mostly want to provide kind of uh, some color commentary on sort of how the, the board reacted uh, and double down on some of the key priorities. Um, but really, I'm looking at the plan for 2013. I'm going to let Jess and Bobby show some early thinking on it as well as ask Aaron and Brett and Chris to kind of go into how we actually dive into doing these goals. So if people have got questions about these things, throw them in the Etherpad, I'll, I'll take a look. But really, it, we're, I think, moving from talking about this stuff to doing this stuff as we move into the first uh, week of January. So, you know, quick piece is the definition of WebMaker, um, that it really is still teaching the art and craft of WebMaker for anyone who wants to make something on the web that that making and learning piece is at the core of the, the product. Um, and the board likes that definition, although I think there is an encouragement to get more concrete uh, as we move along. And I think building and focusing the, the tools and webmaker.org uh, is going to help us do that. In terms of the big picture of 2013, it really is about something that people get and people love. And I think we, the board recognizes and, and underlined for us um, we've got great tools. We haven't really shown people what they're for, especially if you think about popcorn. It's something that we see a lot of potential in, but we haven't actually got the content out there or the examples out there where people click. Uh, and so that's a big part of where they're encouraging us to focus in terms of a product that people love. Um, the people who we want to have love it are really both the makers, uh, people who are creative self-starters, and the mentors, people who want to teach with this stuff. Uh, with the makers really being the audience for the core WebMaker product, uh, and the mentors being the people who are out there doing things like summer code parties, but all the time. And it's, it's important to pause here maybe for a second to say uh, there really is a strong encouragement to be ambitious uh, this year. And so if the shift is to making something people love, getting to something in the hundreds of thousands in terms of people who are coming back to WebMaker on a regular basis is the right thing to reach for, in their opinion. Um, and I think you know, Ryan and other people are going to be on the hook for figuring out what does that look like and metricing that. So that will be a topic of discussion as we go forward. So it's not just that number like out of the air so we feel good. Um, but I think that will be a shift this year is that we're actually looking at numbers and thinking about you know, do people like this. Um, and not just waving our arms about something that people love. And similarly with the teachers, I think you know, the idea is we're ambitious. We had 1,000 people show up uh, in 2012. 
to look at 10 xing that this year by being more organized, by being more permanent with the summer code party idea. So then in terms of the actual ways to kind of get there, there's three real goals. And as I said, uh, Brett, Aaron, and Chris will unpack the how we do these things. And we talked about them before. But one is to really make, uh, make WebMaker into a popular way that people come and make stuff on the web. Uh, and one of the things there was a real encouragement from the board on is like put popcorn at the center of that in some ways as the thing that nobody else has. It doesn't mean that thimble or goggles aren't wrapped around that as, as important. It doesn't mean that badges aren't critical to how we build in learning. But nobody else has popcorn maker. That should be the basis of, of how we kind of get people's attention. Uh, and then, as I said, um, the idea of kind of getting people to level up and get skills and develop craft inside of these tools um, was probably the thing that they pushed on the most, saying don't just make this a set of social media tools. Yes, also make it that. Make this stuff popular. Get people to show up and make stuff. Um, but if we've lost the learning in this, then you know, we, we're doing it for the wrong reasons. Um, and so that's a really critical piece, I think, as Aaron takes the badges stuff uh, much, much further this year that um, we're going to see them really looking at us on. Uh, and then the last goal of this is to really grow that community of mentors. And so we've talked about that already. The tactical piece of that is to merge what we've been doing with Hive, grow that in more cities with the summer code party uh, idea, and make that code party something that happens all year round. Uh, and Chris Lawrence will talk about that. So two more things on those goals, and then, and then another quick note on labs uh, before I wrap up. Uh, one is... As I said earlier, I think there's a very strong push from them to like show what this stuff is for. Um, so show what it, you know, it's for to be able to come into Thimble uh, and make stuff and learn code. Like what does that look like in a compelling and exciting way that people want to come to because they want to make stuff, as opposed to uh, you know having it be something that walks just through the learning piece of it. Uh, and in particular, with popcorn showing what is the content that you can uniquely make using these tools. What does it look like to have view source for video? What does it look like to create beautiful things that are dynamically generated uh, on the web? Um, in some ways, the, you know, PBS NewsHour being one example, one of the few examples of, of that kind of piece with AdLibs. And so there's a real focus on that. And what it means is a shift beyond or a move beyond just the current idea of projects in WebMaker to stuff that starts with things people want to share. Like the test is, is the thing you're getting people to make, make in WebMaker something you actually would want to show off to your friends? And if it's not, it probably isn't compelling enough for the right base starter piece. Um, it doesn't mean it's fancy. It doesn't mean it's shiny. It doesn't mean any of those things. Um, but it does, the test is, is it something compelling enough that people want to share with their friends? Uh, and then do we bake learning into those things that we put out there? So there's a, a real push to get to that spot and show what we mean by this as a way to bring people uh, in the door and get them making with us. And the, the three things that uh, the board agreed are most important in all of that from a, um, from a kind of development perspective on the tools and the site and the content is consolidating the WebMaker tools and so following through on what we started. Uh, and Chris McAvoy and, and you know, working with Brett and Aaron and others is kind of building the, the roadmap of how we actually do that follow through stuff. But then really putting popcorn at the center of it as the unique feature. Again, it doesn't mean those other things um, disappearing, although what it does mean is all of them seeming like WebMaker and some of the distinctions between those tools um, starting to fade away, at least in the public perception uh, of what they are, that they're an integrated suite. And then you know, the other piece is really to scale our web literacy vision by putting badges everywhere. And by everywhere, meaning not just in our tools. We're going to have our tools out there on other people's sites like Telefonica and Lady Gaga's foundation, and our badges will go with those tools. Um, but also, Erin has a plan, which I think she'll talk about a little bit, to have us basically have a badge standard or a web literacy standard that other people can issue their own badges on somewhere like Crafty or somewhere like Code Academy. Um, so that's another big piece that is important. And then the final piece, and I don't know what uh, Bobby and Jess are going to demo, probably not this piece, but this is a mock-up from Jess on the screen capture of a Facebook embed uh, where you can go and remix and get pulled out of Facebook with a popcorn video. 
And the idea of doing stuff like that that infects and disrupts existing social networks where you actually would get people sharing with their friends in the places they already are, but in a way that then pulls you out into our experience and pulls you out into kind of a view source world um, is uh, you know, another thing that is seen in the, as one of the most important things we can do this year. So that's the, that's the stuff in terms of building on the core of, of WebMaker. Um, the other thing we're going to do is set up a labs group which is both focused on new WebMaker themes like hackable games, uh, like mobile webmaking, as well as is the home to things like Open News and the new Sloan Science Project that we're starting, uh, and so on. And that's something which is still in the early process of, of being defined. David Asher will lead that as a part of a Mozilla-wide effort to become better at labs-like work. we will tie a lot back into what Jeffrey is doing in leading the development team. But uh, we certainly will carve out that space um, as a place for our, us to experiment and ask questions about what do we want to build next, uh, and also to a certain degree as a place to build innovation communities as we're doing with Open News. Um, and so that, I think, is a, a, an announcement, but also a to be continued on what that exactly is, uh, although we're going to start doing stuff, some stuff in there uh, early on. So just to finish, uh, I think if we succeed in 2013, uh, we end up with uh, people loving what we've made. Uh, I think people get and are excited about what we've made so far, but it hasn't gotten to the point where it's like, yes, that's the thing the world needs, and we certainly haven't seen people kind of vote with their feet in that way. And so I think that's success looks like in 2013 is people loving it and getting it and wanting it. Uh, and then, you know, the traction that we'll see will, or don't see will be kind of the indicator of whether we get there. And I think that the thing we don't really know yet, as the last point, is, you know, how do people actually learn with this stuff? And do they? Uh, and how can we be disruptive <coughs> with, you know, and disrupt things like Facebook uh, with the kind of things that we're building? And I think by the end of 2013, we'll know better. Are we teaching? What are people learning? Uh, and are we disrupting? And do we have a chance to do something that's really big here? Um, so that's a, a just as important as actually getting the traction. So I'm going to see if there are questions in the etherpad. But that's where we got with the board meeting. Fits with uh, what we've talked about so far. Um, and now the question is, like, how do we make some of that real? Because it's pretty abstract uh, stuff. So let me go down and see. So Labs piece is a middle-wide initiative, uh, not WebMaker Labs. So the, the Labs piece, again, we'll, we'll come and probably do a whole call on it at some point. Um, and it, there's lots of, not, lots of stuff we haven't answered yet about it. But the idea is that Labs will be a middle-wide initiative overall. Inside of that uh, will be uh, both a WebMaker set of activities which would be the primary thing where we put our resources, uh, but projects like Ignite, Open News, uh, and so on, which are also about exploration in many ways and using a kind of community-based approach to innovation exploration will also sit in labs. I'm waiting for the last, that question on line 166 to be typed and then I will answer it and then we will move on to uh, Jess and Bobby. So it's a longer conversation about what the strength of the make, maker movement is web maker where the making starts. I think, uh, you know, the, the, the metaphor that Mitchell gave to me is, uh, you know, Firefox never would have um, succeeded without open source being out there as a meme. Uh, and open source never would have been as big as a meme without Firefox. And I think that's where we fit into the broader maker movement, which is we're able to use it as a springboard for what we're trying to do and hopefully become something that is, is big. Uh, and, and if that happens, the whole maker movement itself uh, you know, grows and succeeds more. So with that, uh, I'm happy to take more questions, but I think a lot of them will get answered in stuff that Brett and Aaron are doing. So why don't I throw it over to Bobby and Jess to talk just a little bit about uh, some first playing with things that we want to do to kind of interpret these goals and, and look at them on the web. 
uh, and in our products. Hello. Can someone yeah. confirm they hear me? Hi. Okay. <laughs> um, so as Mark was saying, um, 2013 is full of a ton of opportunity for us. And for WebMaker that means evolving our design to be a more collaborative, social, and frankly real world experience where learning is making. And over the past few weeks, a bunch of us on the WebMaker team took some time to do the blue sky thinking that, that's needed to take a design from concept to the next level. And we came up with some ideas and prototypes that I'm going to share with you today. Each prototype here basically represents some big picture concept that we want to continue to explore. So think of these ideas that we're, as ideas that we're going to iterate on with everyone who's on this call um, in 2013. So um, please add your feedback in the Etherpad. I'm going to focus on trying to get you through this as fast as I can. So the first prototype that you're looking at is a mock-up. Um, and it's called, it's basically the idea is that it's your creative cloud. We want to make it easy to collect, share, and remix content from your world. And this means everywhere that you are going, whether that be collecting content from your phone. Um, Bobby, can you scroll down a little? Or your browser. Or scroll down. Adding that content directly to a project to remix on WebMaker or wait for it, maybe in the future that means remixing WebMaker content that you have clipped or saved from your cloud and remixing that content on the web in a more distributed manner. We feel that this is one area that Mozilla can lead because we're uniquely situated to be effective here because of the precedent of bookmarking in, in Firefox browser as well as our work directly around identity in conjunction with Persona. We don't want to lock you into a uniquely browser-based experience, but the opportunities for the association and leveraging of brand and design values here are quite large. So moving on to the second mock-up. Um, Collaboration as learning is also a big theme for us, not just in this mock-up that I'm showing, but it's going to be a consistent and fluid theme within our tools and platform. In this mock-up, you're looking at um, a system for using revision history as a way to document process. Here, just like in Etherpad, you're able to record your web making sessions and replay them at different points in your timeline. What's exciting about this um, is that you can see that the work you've done and how you constructed a project, but also how a peer who is helping you hack on your project made the changes that she made. And this allows for, for asymmetrical as well as select, select, symmetrical <laughs> collaboration experiences. So move on to the next, the next mock-up. One of our goals is really to make our tools start to speak the same language. We're trying to make the experience for an average user easier. And this means putting some co controls in place so that the user starts to recognize conventions and see how WebMaker properties relate to each other. And as you can see here, I'm starting to experiment with building a more unified experience. And that, that's including things like having a unified login for WebMaker, building out common ter terminology, controls, um, and user interface and incorporating those tools into the same user experience. And finally, for the last prototype of our prototyping party, the one you've all been waiting for, <laughs> um, making web making collaborative. For us, this means creating opportunities for a community of craft, working with peers and mentors, as, as Mark was explaining, to build the web in a social and real way. So I'm going to demo this prototype, and Bo Bobby's going to wingman me on this. Um, so I'm going to start out. <laughs> So looking at this mock-up, imagine that you logged into webmaker.org and landed on a gallery page. The view that you're looking at is as if you followed several other Webmaker users who have posted projects that they made as well as themes that you made, might have followed, for example, like video projects or projects about activism. Any of these projects are, are remixable. You're also seeing on the bottom right, um, badge graphics, which when you click on them, open up to a sub-gallery of sets of projects connected to various skills. For the moment, imagine that your secret Robotron going on to this page. You see a cool project by your friend, and you click the green remix button, which is on the left, upper left side of the screen in, in one of the projects. And it opens it directly in the editor. Bobby, take it away. Hello. Um, so uh, I'm just going to wait for the screen to update. There we go. Um, so uh, now we're inside of Popcorn Maker. Um, and uh, if I have 
um, I, I'm inside a popcorn maker and I'm starting to make a project, so I maybe make a couple of uh, my own edits here, um, and I can save my project like, like I normally would, my cool project. Um, but if I want someone to collaborate with me, uh, now we've sort of played with the idea of having that, that possible. So I have a friend named Secret Robotron, and I'm <laughs> going to send him an invitation. And so I'm going to copy this link address, and I'm going to go over to a, a new browser window, which is going to represent someone else entirely. Um, and it's going to ask me, do you want to collaborate with this guy named Bobby? So I'm going to click yes, and it's going to load up the same view of that project. So you can see that if I make some changes over here in uh, my first project, then the same thing happens in the other one, which is great. Wow. The internet is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> However, um, I invited uh, Secret Robotron to help me out because maybe he has some expertise in, in like planting texts or something. So um, I've uh, added the ability to, to move this um, as well if I'm the collaborator, um, which sends a suggestion over to uh, the uh, initial person's version of the, of the suite. Um, and if I, I can actually click on this to uh, see what he suggested. So um, you can see that it says collaborator updates in the, in the editor here, and if I hover over that, it will show me what the result might be. And so I can see mine, and then I can see what the result will become. And if I want to, I can click that to commit that result. Um, which becomes a part of both of our projects at that point. So now, uh, since he's done something cool for me, um, I can click the Save button again, and now, as a result of that, we've both published something on, onto the Internet, and you can see that me and Secret Robotron here have... Um, <laughs> 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 it looks a lot like <laughs> So these are... Um, some examples of things that we've been thinking about. And this is exactly how we want to be working, putting out kind of crazy ideas, testing them out, seeing what sticks, and, and iterating on them. I want to give huge shout-outs to Chris um, Appleton, Kate, Bobby, Atul, Brett, Aaron, and really everyone who's been on all of these community calls in 2013. As I, as I said earlier, this is an evolution of our thinking. So all of these ideas came out of a lot of groundwork, user testing, hive pop-ups, and festivals. But let me just say that that last prototype was built in a period of 48 hours by Bobby, myself, and Chris Appleton. So if all it takes is 48 hours to get some collaborative web making action, imagine what we can do in 2013. Yay. Right on. <laughs> Jess, thank you so much. Sorry, we have the clapping machine on mute. <laughs> Great stuff, Jess and Bobby. That really like makes it super real and, and is exciting. Um, are there, I'm not watching the Ethernet. Are there questions in there uh, for these guys? And we we'll probably just have about five minutes, and then we want to move on to the next bit. No, I only just see enthusiasm. So <laughs> enthusiasm. <laughs> All right. So the, the last half of this, and maybe we'll get done sooner than the half an hour and, and can get to some other stuff, is uh, you know, while this stuff is exciting, there's a huge amount of like, work between this stuff, which I think is the raw material for a webmaker people can love, and like, shipping uh, and actually making all the design decisions along the way uh, to a, a webmaker that people love. And so as we talked about before, uh, you know, Aaron, Brett, and um, Chris Lawrence have all been sort of willing to step up and lead us getting to, to done on a bunch of this stuff, and each of them has taken on one of those big three goals. Um, and, and behind that, Chris McAvoy has taken on trying to make sure we can build an engineering team and engineering processes that support all of those goals. Um, and so knowing there are still many unanswered questions, um, what I wanted to do was get Brett, Aaron and, um, and Chris Lawrence to talk about how they see us diving into each of those goals and then you know, have a chance for some discussion at least in the Etherpad or at least a, a way to start asking some, some questions about where we're going. Um, and the one thing I would say is, is you'll see as we kind of go through this, um, there's a real emphasis on the content leading and Brett actually moving a little bit more uh, than maybe we, we thought in the beginning into bottom lining the tools. 
uh, as a part of this next phase. And Aaron really bottom line the learning being in there and bottom lining badges becoming huge. Uh, and Chris Lawrence bottom lining the, the whole community piece. So Brett, Aaron, and Chris, do you guys want to just, and I know there's an etherpad, sub etherpad in there, which is always a little confusing in these if people want to link through to that. Do you guys want to just give us the kind of highlights on your thoughts on, on your goal? Sure, I can go first. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Um, amazing job, Jess and Bobby. That was that was just exactly what I needed to end the year off on. That was that was really awesome. And I think Mark just mentioned a lot of already um, what uh, our focus is going to be next year. You know, we really want to drive features in WebMaker.org and WebMaker Tools with a focus on what our users will make. We really want to focus on that and improve that uh, every single day. So like, we want what Jess and Bobby made to be happening constantly. Uh, we want people to learn while they're making too. Um, so we have to think really hard and constantly iterate on how our tools are helping people do that. So I really enjoyed a lot of the discussion in the past week on the WebMaker list about things like scripting, user portfolios, etc. And we want to make those ideas real. And you can see that that can happen uh, if we have a creative process where content and design and learning and engineering have a tight and effective feedback loop amongst one another. So we really want to, to model that and to show it. We want to place a heavy emphasis on design. Um, which you can see is already working. And you know, we really want to look forward to collaborating with, with all of you, with the learning team to design how people you know, become web literate. Um, and I want to also call out with the partnerships and development team. So um, often in the past we've, we've done that um, in a gloriously um, ad hoc way. But what we want to begin to do is identify new partnerships um, out, out in the world and bring them into WebMaker and, and really have a, a systematic and focused way that we can make sure that that partner content or our partner development fits well within WebMaker um, and brings new people in the door. And those people were listening to what they need and constantly iterating and testing in the market um, that what we're building meets their needs. Um, so, you know, and, and also with the community, with all of you, and with the team that Chris Lawrence is leading to basically keep all of this real and ensure it's meeting the needs of makers and instructors. And so there's, there's lots in that pad, uh, and I can go into it, um, but that's what we want to do. And I just also want to point out that to make this real, uh, early in, in next year we want to assemble in Toronto on a, on a sprint to to develop what the content types that people are going to make will be. And so we want to have a process like Jess and Bobby just went through um, as quick as we can when we get back from the new year. Cool. Thank you, Brett. And I, my guess is I'm just jumping between windows that we'll get questions in one or the other of the pads. But um, that's really helpful, I think, in terms of the, the stuff that we're going to dive in on, on, bleh, dive in on that goal one. Uh, and the idea that we'll actually get to prototype more what that content looks like first thing in the year. Aaron, do you want to go through some similar top-level bullets uh, just for the, the learning side of this? Sure. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so I am responsible for, my team is responsible for um, the second big goal, which is, uh, as you guys can all read, but building features to level up and recognize skills craft and code while you make things. Um, and I edited that slightly from the original and added the recognize skills piece because um, the primary metric here is really the number of badges. And we've talked about this a lot um, leading up to this where it's, it's not just about, like when we talk about badges, um, which are the, the sort of recognizer at the end, it's also about that the learning and assessment design behind those badges. So, so that's really what um, my team is going to be focused on. And that team includes um, me and Carla and Doug um, and Sunny, Emily, Dave Lester, who some of you have met, and then um, a couple more additions at some point. Um, but so really like um, our core objectives and scope, which are similar, um, one is really building that learning or being responsible for that learning um, within our tools and our content. And so that's things like um, how we do instruction, um, how we do assessment, um, how the actual badges are issued, and some of the revision history types of stuff that you saw from just today. 
Um, so that's all going to be stuff that we're going to really drive um, and work very closely with Brett um, and his team and Chris McAvoy and his team um, to implement. Um, and then with the web literacy work that Doug has has been doing, um, we're really going to shift gears next year and think about this as a standard um, and, and invite a bunch of people to the table to actually define that standard with us and, and start to align with it. Um, and so that really uh, helps us advance um, our goal of, of that number of badges, which um, I didn't say before, but it, that's both the number of badges that people earn on our site, but also the, the number of of our badges or aligned badges that people are earning um, across a bunch of different sites. Um, and then finally, objectives and scope is obviously badges, but um, again, it's, it's about um, the WebMaker badges specifically as well as open badges, so really working to make um, badges a success in driving the adopt adoption there. Um, so I think it's just worth mentioning that um, even though I sort of I outlined the team above. Um, there are lots and lots of groups that we're we'll, going to be collaborating with, and everybody it's all listed there on the pad, but worth noting that we're going to have to work obviously very, very close with Brett and Jess and that team, um, again, on, on getting the, the sort of learning instruction features in the tools and content. Um, and then Chris McAvoy managing the engineers, obviously um, we're going to work very, very closely with them, and especially engineers that are that are sort of allotted to badges at any given time. And then finally, Chris Lawrence. Um, you know, I think, again, if, if our goal is really uh, about getting the web literacy standard out there and getting other people adopting it and, <clears throat> and, and sort of growing the learning landscape that way, um, obviously the mentor community and the Hive model is, is a really important piece. Um, so just what we'll do first. Um, again, there's stuff listed there, but I think the, the key stuff that we're going to do um, right when we get back is organize an event of some sort around this web literacy standard. So invite the code academies, invite um, the core partners to the table, um, both to sort of help us define things, although I think we're pretty far along, but, but also to, to sort of sign up to kind of leave that meeting with some type of, um, of agree, agreeing to committal, uh, just basically <laughs> not using my words today, signing up to, um, to actually work together uh, in some way across next year. So aligning with that standard, teaching to those skills using those badges. Um, we also will define our full set of badges. We did a very, very small set of badges for MouseFest as you guys see, and we want to expand that across that whole uh, set of skills. And then also the OBI 1.0 is planned to launch in March. So we're, we're doing a bunch of really exciting features um, there that we will dig into in January. Cool. The clapping machine was, was uh, muted. Thank you, Aaron. Um, that's awesome. And I, and I think the real thing to underline in all of that uh, stuff, because there's a lot, is a focus on both badges becoming bigger as a way to drive learning and, and kind of us clarifying how we drive learning um, inside of our core WebMaker tools, but also really looking at one way that we get scale as being this very lightweight uh, literacy uh, standard which can take off uh, and people can run with, which I think has a huge amount of potential. Chris Lawrence, how is the mentor community going to make this real and, uh, and ground things? And at this point, as Chris goes on this, because we're far down the pad, we're at line 115. All right. Hello. Just to confirm you can hear me? Yep. Okay. Great. Thank you, everybody. Um, so as Mark mentioned a few times, I, I think that the mentor community team now filling out the third bullet point, which is um, basically to create a global community of makers and mentors that power WebMaker, um, really was kind of the, you know, what I've been sort of calling the, the mixed breed mutt of, a, of two very successful community outreach programs that we enacted in 2012. Um, so that was the Hive Learning Network in New York City and then the uh, first attempts to, to start those in new locations in those new cities and to sort of ex, uh, expand that into a global network which will ramp up. And then the, the summer code party and I think even to an extent Mozilla Festival and then how do you have these distributed community-based events that really bring together people involved in somehow teaching and learning from each other. And so having those two uh, community outreach programs this year and how do you actually link those together into sort of one one goal and one team to, to think about what, what worked in that and how to make those linkages. So that's really what we're going to be working on. And I think what's important is in the global mentor community, we really view ourselves 
we've been sort of kicking around the term context localizers. So just like you'd local, localize something for different languages or different cultures or different geographical regions, that we're going to be taking this, the web maker stuff, whether that's tools or content or badges, all of the, the amazing stuff that, that Aaron and Brett are going to lead and that the engineering team is going to pump out and that we saw demo today, and start to introduce those into learning communities and mentor communities, and then start to see what, what they need, how they use them, and what's relevant or not relevant, and then having that mentor community really be a laboratory for that sort of, you know, sort of where the rhetoric meets the road on some of this, um, both as a feedback loop, as a, as a new uh, sort of scouting for new ideas, and also to see what people are actually doing with what we're doing and to, to turn more people into helping other people use our stuff or use a sort of web making, making is learning is identity. And so if you could, a couple of um, catchphrases for us, one, you know, the sort of the web maker idea of how we fit into the meme as Mark talks about is this idea that making is learning. And essentially that everything we've heard today that's our piece of the meme, and so that really is where our idealism, where our pedagogy, and where our practice intermingle in that sort of making is learning philosophy, and that will, will be at the core of our mentor community work. Um, in 2013, we're really going after, I'd say, what we've been sort of beginning to conceptualize um, as our target audience, at least in, in the first year, and this is sort of the idea of how do you take makers or hackers or technologists um, who have some concept of themselves or some disposition or attitude towards helping others, sort of, um, and, you know, to teaching or to helping others or to sharing their skills. Um, and so that idea is how do you take these makers and move them towards a mentor mentality or help them develop um, that mentor mentality. And so, um, and then on the flip side is in the various learning communities and different practitioners and, and club organizers and parents and these people that are somehow invested in helping people learn, often youth but not exclusively, how do you find those mentors who, who identify themselves or have some part of their uh, makeup wanting to teach other people something and, and either massage or tease out their identity as a maker, help them develop that, or take both of those identities and, and put them into, into the community. So that's for 2013, this sort of cross-hatch idea. This is what we've been calling kindred techie or kindred uh, makers and kin kindred uh, teachers or mentors and sort of making those the sort of two sides of where we might want the community to fall in 2013. Um, so some of the, the two big ideas that we're sort of mashing together, the summer code party all the time, or as someone commented, the all-time uh, all code party, someone mentioned in the chat, and the Hive idea, which is a little bit obviously a more structured, organized network to, uh, of basically education professionals or people who are in somewhere in that universe. And so within this mentor community, we're looking to expand that idea of Hives, which are very structured and become kind of very high-end learning laboratories that are linked to, to mostly cities, but that are very regional or geographically located. Um, and then the more dispersed learning party mentor community, how do you help others help others? And how do these two things work in concert? So that, those are the big ideas. Um, the immediate team for that is, is myself, Michelle Thorne, uh, Lainey DeCourcy, Leah Gilliam, and Laura Hilliger. And hopefully that will expand, but that's the team as we will enter 2013. Um, we're going to be collaborating with everyone, obviously. I mean, Aaron and Brett's team and Chris McAvoy's team in terms of, you know, how do we feed back to these tools? How do we get people to use these tools? How do we think about pe how people could use these tools better for mentoring or how the designers and the engineers can think about how people are going to use these for learning. I think it's also, you know, I hear Mark talk a lot about, you know, if your friend would want to use it, that's, that's a metric in some way or that's a, a litmus test, but also would your colleague want to use it? Would your students want to use it? Would your collaborators want to use it? I think that's a little bit of a, a lens that we'll bring from the mentor community work. Um, and then, of course, I think also there's going to be deep, um, deep collaboration with the engagement team in that we feel that one of the things that Summer Code Party and Hive did very effectively in 2012 was start to tease out the narratives and really diversify who and what, why, and how people are using WebMaker. And so really combining with the engagement team about dynamic storytelling and then bubbling up what those narratives are, um, I think is going to be a really important piece for us um, 
coming into 2013. Um, so immediately kind of hit the ground running right after the, the holiday break um, are two things. One, we're going to put in our, our uh, what is that Hive Learning Network global plan of action look like um, with a variety of partners and get that plan into action. Um, there will be, th as of January 1st, there will be three hives, Pittsburgh, Chicago, and New York. Very quickly, probably Athens, Greece, and Toronto with one places like London and San Francisco all coming, you know, having momentum towards that. So if I was talking a year from now, you could imagine a, a hive network that was Chicago, New York, Pittsburgh, hive, uh, sorry, Athens, Toronto, blah, blah, blah. So that's, that's quite a growth. And then two, um, we really feel like on the webmaker.org page that there's a real immediate opportunity to start putting uh, a mentor community tab there and sort of aggregating what we've already gotten there and to see where we want to go forward because we sort of identified along with the engagement team that on webmaker.org there's not, you know, there's a, you can get to the tools and some of the sort of PR pieces, but there really is a kind of a, you know, people entry point into the work. So very quickly, first six weeks of 2013, seeing how, if we can't get the community, the mentors, sort of uh, have some pathways within webmaker.org. Um, and then continuing to work on what the Mozilla Learning Strategy uh, plan is and our storytelling. Those are sort of our first, uh, I'd say, eight weeks of 2013, um, amongst obviously much other stuff that is in the pad and also beyond the, the, the ether pad. So that is my spiel, as Mike Watt would say. We again had this on mute. Clapping machine. <laughs> um, thanks to, to all three of you, and I think that starts to at least give us a sense of between what Bobby and Jess showed and what these guys just outlined, what we can you know, get ramped up on as soon as we get back in January. Um, and uh, you know, there's a bunch also just in consolidating uh, what we've done. Um, Chris McAvoy, I know you're on the, the phone. Do you want to say anything back against those three things just from the, the engineering perspective? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll make it kind of quick because I know we're going long. But um, yeah, I, I mean, I think you saw sort of the, the direction we're heading um, in, in action earlier in the call with the idea of prototyping things and then figuring out what really works, presenting it here in, in a loose fashion, um, and getting feedback on it so that we can validate really early on that, that the, the things that we're working on are the right things to work on. Um, but then following that, like we, I, I mean, from, from engineering's perspective, I think the, the, the big takeaway from all of this is that we've got really awesome big plans and now we need to figure out how to execute on them. So, there's going to be some, some work to figure out how we work um, as an internal team, but more importantly, there's going to be a lot of work to figure out how we're going to, to leverage the community to help us develop some of this stuff. So David Humphrey's been working in that space for years and years, and, and he's going to really help us figure out um, how to be a real community-driven organization or, or do – uh, development in partnership with the community going forward, and I think that if we if we um, succeed at that, we'll be able to to do all of the things that we've outlined uh, on this call plus more. So, um, yeah, we really need all of your help, all the people on this call, all the people that aren't necessarily Mozilla employees but are Mozillians. We need your help, and we'll figure out ways to to make it easier for for you to help us. Um, and then we'll all be awesome together. And then in 2014, it's just going to be looking back on 2013 and giving each other big high fives. <laughs> Loving it. Um, thank you, Chris. Um, I am ready for the high five. Um, so just before we, we wrap this section, there might be time for, for one other item if there's something in there, but I wonder if there are questions people want to jump in with verbally by unmuting or in particular, uh, you know, Jess or Brett, uh, if you guys want to talk about that um, thread on the, on the tools integration that started on 256. And I think most, you know, there's a good conversation in the Etherpad. It may not all have to be verbalized. Yeah, I think it's happening well in the Etherpad, Mark. Um, 
but one of the things that I added is I think you know we we want to lead with um, with WebMaker, and you know we want to start to blur the distinction between them essentially, um, and, and there's we want to integrate them. But there's good discussion in the pad, and and it it'll be a, a great conversation to have as we start the year. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you all four of you, and thank you everybody. Thank you, Bobby and Jess, uh, for driving ahead on those demos. Um, I think it's a good time to know we're finished the yak uh, as much as we can be in terms of the planning, uh, and we're moving into the hack. Uh, although we've got um, a couple weeks before we get back into hack, and so I think winding down, like processing these ideas, thinking about what you most want to do next uh, as we go into next year. Um, is the kind of order of the day. And I think the, the clapping machine gets to do its last act of 2012, which is um, both the, to uh, congratulate us and think about where we're headed next year. So clap. <laughs> Alan Gunn, back to you. Thank you, thank you. And Matt, I think we had, uh, was it Sartre that was going to do a quick update if we had time? I think, yeah, I think, I think Syak wanted to do a quick update. Syak, are you there? And do you want to spend a couple minutes telling us about your youth open source project? We have about three minutes. <coughs> Syak, hello. Start. Yeah, hello. Uh, okay. So I'll try to do a quick uh, update over here. So a couple of weeks back, uh, Emma introduced uh, our project uh, to everyone during this call, and uh, well. The definition of the what we are trying to do has already been written there, uh, thanks to Laura. And uh, basically, uh, in the last couple of weeks, uh, we have come uh, quite far. Basically, so we need to uh, we need a major bit of help in two particular areas. So basically, uh, we were thinking about a question that we can ask to the youth. Uh, basically, to ask them how uh, they can help us, how uh, maybe they can help educators focus their uh, focus uh, put focus on a particular group of uh, youth uh, and uh, give them something to work with them so basically uh, we need uh, uh, everyone's help over here to figure out a particular question that we can ask to the youth uh, from all over the world and uh, the second thing that we need a great amount of help is uh, we need a catchy name for the project so basically what has happened is that they have realized that the name Youth Open Source Project is a bit too long for uh, URLs and wikis. So we wanted to shorten that a bit, but also maintain that uh, the project is ab about openness, collaborating uh, with everyone, and also youth contribution along with the spirit of the open web. So basically, we wanted uh, suggestions for that. So basically, if you see on line 296, we have got some suggestions down there, and we would love it if you could give us a few more suggestions. And also, if you could just uh, see there's a Google Doc uh, for a spreadsheet where you can see some more questions. So if you like any question out there, you can just give a plus one on it. And if you want to add something, uh, it would be great if you can add something to it. So that's basically my thought of it. And also, one last thing, we have been having some community calls for the last couple of weeks, and you can see the links for the community calls uh, on line 310, that's 310. And uh, well, that's all for me. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, right on. And I'm just looking to see if there are any questions down that way. But yeah, very, very exciting. Um, and some suggestions being added down around 300. But right on. Thank you very, very much, Sai. Very appreciate all that leadership and passion. Um, right on. Will Barkas, do you want to give a one minute update on Learning Labs for Advanced tech Web Technologies? Hey, can you, hey, Gunnar, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Um, Sure, one minute. So basically we're creating a set of, of um, resources for developers who are you know, current developers using advanced web technologies. Um, so to, to basically 
think about the future of unconstrained networks. And so um, you can see the topic set down in the notes, but we, we've created uh, two that are actually published. The third is very close. Um, the first one's on WebGL and what, what you might do with it on gigabit networks. Um, the second one's on, on WebRTC at a gigabit per second. Actually, the first, second one is on WebRTC audio and video, uh, and the third one is actually on WebRTC data um, sharing. Um, so uh, yeah, people should just check them out. It's a you know the format is a quick video interviewing experts, like kind of blow your mind a little bit, and then actually do like a hackable demo. Um, it's it's really cool, and it's actually made with uh, popcorn. So if you, people should check it out. It's just as a didactic tool. I'd be curious to hear what people have to think about or have to say about it. Um, but yeah, I'll leave it at that. That was an awesome update. Thank you very much. Any quick questions for Will? Otherwise, I'm going to give Sunny a quick one minute just to tell us about the product sprints. I don't see, uh, and so Will, I'll just draw your attention to line 359, which is a very long line. Um, Sunny, do you want to give us <coughs> just one minute on the Open Badges product sprint? Sure. Um, I have linked the blog post that details um, what we discussed <coughs> on line 371. Um, so please take a look. Um, highlights are highlight features are listed under line 375. Um, the nine kind of key features that we discussed and we're tackling in the next quarter are as follows: COPPA extending the metadata specification to include uh, an optional standards alignment and an optional tags um, field. Um, we'll be making sure that we comply with 508. We'll have um, a greater um, Facebook display integration incorporated. We'll have signed badges. Um, we'll have the ability for badge, uh, badges approved by issuers automatically pushed into a badge earner's backpack. Um, we'll have a more elegant user experience around revocation of badges and also badge expiration. And that's it. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to seeing what comes out of that sprint. I would draw everyone's attention to the nonverbal updates that start on line 407. Lots of good stuff going on, including some stuff from MRZ. Uh, his crazy idea for no shaving in December and getting past the Movember meme. That's why it's a nonverbal update. You go, MRZ. You go. All right, beautiful people. There are more items there. Check them out. Get them while they're hot. I cannot thank everyone nearly enough for all the amazing WebMaker things that have happened in 2012. Matt, Mark, anybody, anything else you want to say to our wonderful community before we wish them the happiest of holidays? Just I only want to wish them the happiest of holidays, so get to it. <laughs> Excellent. Just Friends, oh, go ahead. Remind people, I was just going to say that uh, the next call will not be until Tuesday, January 8th given that the 25th, December 25th and January 1st calls are canceled. Excellent. As just stated, we will see you, friends, on Tuesday, January 8th. Thank you for a fantastic 2012 in the WebMaker world, WebMaker community, and we're very much looking forward to what we make and learn together in 2013. Have a great holiday, everyone. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks, Gunner. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Please stand by.